Hi, this is John LeBan. Um, my call to action is to measure holistically data center carbon footprints and followed by data center decarbonization actions um, based in the 21st century open source collaborative commons and its associated circular economy. This is the agenda I'm gonna cover. And I just want to run through initially the scope two and three relationships. Um, I also want to talk about uh, the concept of being slaves to the economist models. And I'll touch on the 21st century embedded economy. I'd also like to kill the myth that being green costs more money. Also, open source ICT hardware is well rotted horseshit for growing the circular economy, the importance of open source for circular economy hardware. And yes, to talk about the way open source software um, eats hardware by about 90%. And I'll give you some examples of that. So data center CO2 emissions, if you don't measure them, then you can't improve them. Um, I could be wrong, but um, what do you think? Uh, I don't think people are really measuring holistically CO2 emissions. Now, this is the Greenhouse Gas Protocol, which has been around for nearly 20 years, and it tells you how to do that. I've assumed that uh, people are familiar with what scope one, two and three is. Now, what I wanna try and show is the importance of scope three. Now this here is the City of London Corporation generated their climate action strategy this month. You can go and download it from that uh, link at the bottom. And when you have a look in there, you'll find that their scope three is 96%. 96%. When you look at the greenhouse gas protocol, the studies they've done on business sectors around the world, and they've found that scope free accounts for more than 80% in each sector, a business in each sector. Now let's look at uh, data centers. I've got uh, two pie charts there. I've got A on the left and it's showing scope free as 20% and I've got on the right, I've got B and I've got scope free accounting for more than 80%. Now the question I'd like to ask is which pie chart is nearer to reality for a data center in Europe? Now there's very few people that can answer this because basically people are not measuring these carbon footprints holistically. I will explain. One thing that you need to be aware of as a scope two, that's the, the carbon intensity of electricity, as that reduces to zero as we move into renewables, scope three emissions will start to move up to 100%. Now here's a, a photograph of a wooden, wooden data center facility in Sweden, Eco Data Center. Thanks for the photo. Um, here in the, um, the picture is a chap called Lars. And if you wanna know about the impact on scope three in terms of the data center building, then go and talk to this chap because he really is considering scope free within their infrastructure. And by the way, Lars is not a data center expert. And I think one of the reasons why they're doing these radical things is because they're not set in the old ways that data center experts normally are. So my call to action is for the data center industry to start measuring holistic CO2 emissions and don't forget the scope free. 
the scope free will become more and more important as we move through this decade. Now, what's going to drive this? What's going to drive it is John Maynard Keynes stated that practical men who believe themselves to be quite exempt from any intellectual influence are usually the slaves of some defunct economist. And I think we're all going to be slaves to the new economic models that are coming through. Let's have a look at uh, gender economics in the 21st century. Notice the ones that are changing the scene are women. They're turning traditional economics on its head. And they're coming up with these 21st century embedded economy models. Now, this is where it's really radical from the old ways of doing economics. But you can see it's embedded because it's embedded in the earth, this finite resource. And from that, you've then got society and economy, those three fundamentally making up sustainable systems. You can see the inputs, solar energy coming in, heat out. But right at the core there, you can see the commons. Now, this is the open source technology collaborative commons that sits within this new embedded economy model. Now, you may have heard about the European Union's Green Deal. This is the president. And she did um, some really big keynotes at uh, Davos this year. And she talks about this transformation of the old economy to the new economy. Now, the Green Deal is fundamentally based on the 21st century embedded economy model. So if you don't know about it, I'd recommend you start to learn about it because it's going to impact you as you move forward in time through this decade. There's going to be legislation coming in from the European Union, and it's not just going to uh, be concerned by those within the European community. If you want to do business with the Europeans, you will have to fall in to compliance on these climate laws they're bringing in. And one of them, which I think is going to be profound, is the EU border tax. And basically, it's when you bring physical products into the European Union, you cross the border, there will be tariffs laid on these products due to how much scope free CO2 there is, i.e. embedded carbon inside the product. Also, the idea of this collaborative commons that's um, starting is uh, EU public money and open source technology policies. This is a call for tenders to study the impact of open source software and hardware on technological independence and competitiveness and innovation in the UK con in the EU economy. And this is a research project that will lead towards policy decisions that if uh, public money is being spent, the technology that it's spent on needs to be open source software and hardware in the ICT field. This here is a wonderful video that you can look at later. Hopefully you'll get access to all these slides. And if you go to that YouTube link, you can play this short video, it's a few minutes, and it will give you the background and the arguments why EU public money will lead towards uh, policies on open source technology purchases. Now, trying to kill the myth about uh, being green costs more. This chap here, Jamie Lerner, he's actually a, a town planner in South America. I love what he says here. If you want creativity, take a zero off your budget. If you want sustainability, take off two zeros. Now let's give you some examples of, by looking at decarbonisation, you financially reduce your financial costs in your data centre environment. Now what we have here is 
a slide that was developed by a Dutch consultant when he discovered open source technologies. And he described it as a hidden revolution. He became aware of it in around about 2017, 18. And he was just dumbstruck by the efficiencies in data centers driven by open source that was fundamentally driven by the users of the technology, not by the vendors, the providers, it was driven by the, the users. And there you've got a comparison in terms of efficiency between open source, the OCP, and the traditional standards and uh, that the industry has been using now for the past 20, 30 years. Just a few of the things where there's improvements, the typical server, um, at low utilization, uh, an open source server using 50% less energy. Another thing I want to touch on users driving open source tech hardware, they're trying to remove what's called uh, gratuitous product differentiation. They're trying to simplify everything. And here we have a basic system of a computer server power supply unit. You see it's a black box in the middle and fundamentally what it does it takes mains ac inputs alternating current inputs and it gives you a 12 volt direct current output fundamentally that's what it does so at the bottom there why do we need hundreds of different incompatible power supply units let's show you a few if you go on google and just do a google search in images for um, server power supplies, you will get hundreds and hundreds of power supplies for servers, all completely differentiated from each other, gratuitously differentiated from each other, so they can't be used between machines, even within the same vendors. Now, here's an example of what um, the open source community did, driven by the consumers of the technologies is here's a, a vanity free open source server. This is typically what's used by the hyperscalers, the telcos now. Uh, governments are moving into it and enterprises are sliding into it. But there are no power supplies inside this server. No power supplies, no graphic units, no bezels. You wouldn't know who made it. Um, and there's a lot more removed as well. That's why we call it vanity free. And this is open technology driven by the consumer of the hardware. Now, vendor driven closed myoptic design mindset. What's their motivations? They want to build in obsolescence, three to five years sweet spot. Gratuitous product differentiation, power supplies. Closed proprietary user lock-in. Here we have Cisco routers and software. Monolithic integration, basically tying together the hardware and the software with proprietary hardware and software in order to uh, lock in that um, user into that vendor's solution. And it also includes proprietary firmware. And if a, a vendor decides he's not going to support that firmware anymore, then effectively you can't use the hardware. Now, prosumer driven open source design is about dematerialization. They're not there to be making more stuff like a vendor, they're there to use as little as possible. <clears throat> to do a, a function, a job. Um, so they're very motivated to reduce stuff. And with open source software, I'll give you some examples of how it reduces the physical hardware in the data center and eats the data center itself. It's very simple. Just here, we've got 
open source firmware. And we've got the right to repair. Now, if we're going to keep things for as long as possible at the highest possible utility, we need the right to repair. Other things, unbundling, unbundling the software and the hardware, disaggregation, we call it. To give more freedom to the users to hack the solutions, to maintain the hardware longer in a useful mode. Now here, there's a, a excellent um, YouTube presentation. It's by the CTO of Comcast talking about applying open source tech to a data center in Atlanta. And here he tells a story about uh, why they did it. And on the left hand picture, you have the before picture. This is the proprietary picture. You've got 10 racks. And that's all replaced by one rack on the right. The open tech virtualized solution. Now, this is a prime example of how open source tech and software just eats the hardware. And this is why the telcos are going to move into this. It has a huge impact on their cost base. Um, the open source community, OCP, started this circular economy just over a year ago. It's really starting to fly. You'll hear other people talking in this um, seminar event that we're running at the moment with SDIA. You'll hear people from a company called IT Renew and others talking about how they're basically repurposing open source hardware um, from the hyperscalers so that it keeps being used longer in other users' data centers. One good example of this is a company, a new startup in Holland called Block Heating. On the top left hand side there, you've got uh, the founder, Jerome. And what they basically do is they're taking air cooled OCP servers and they're hacking them and converting them to liquid, to water, water cooled. And then what they do, they take the water from the from the server at 63 degrees and they feed it into greenhouses and it's used for growing tomatoes, cucumbers and peppers. But the other benefit from this, it substantially reduces the cost and block heating um, will be selling their cloud services that will be running inside these um, modular data centers associated with warming greenhouses. Uh, they'll be selling their services substantially lower than the others that are not getting the benefit of this kind of secondary reuse of heat. Another company that's doing a lot in this respect is a company called OVH. They're a, a French company. Uh, here you've got the, uh, the CTO, Octave Klaber, one of the founders. And I just love their philosophy. The philosophy is, let's just reuse. When they build a data center, they don't build a new data center. They go and find a, an old industrial unit in a business park somewhere. It's got the power. And they just basically recondition that building. And then into that building, they put these servers. What you can see there are racks of OCP servers that were when they were in Facebook air cooled. And here they are now converted uh, for liquid. And as a result, they massively reduce the cost of the infrastructure for the data center by simplifying the way the server has its heat taken off with water. And you could probably build four data center facilities for the price of a traditional enterprise tier three. And this is actually happening in Sweden with other companies, not just OVH. But the cost model is being massively disrupted. 
Now, because OVH are doing this, you can see here, these are prices of um, costs for virtual machines across cloud service providers. And here you've got OVH in blue, you can see them lowest cost right at the bottom. Look where Amazon is. Now Amazon's got scale, but they're not doing this innovation on circular economy and a focus on truly open systems with you know, a minimization of stuff, an obsession of a minimization of stuff like OVH are doing. So it gives them a competitive edge. They get an environmental business advantage. And lastly, here we've got Larry Ellison. <clears throat> yeah, he's the founder of Oracle. Uh, and I love this. Once open source gets good enough, competing with it would be insane. And I believe that uh, open source technology has got good enough in the last decade. And we're going to see some very disruptive times during this decade as people take the advantages of these technologies into data centers. And it will be a very interesting time ahead. So thanks for listening. Now it's question time and um, Looking forward to some questions coming through.